good morning. Good morning from Brazil. Is that right? Yes. Good morning from Brazil. Can you see my screen there? Yes. Very good. 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 Excellent. So thanks everyone from for being here with us. So virtual hellos, hugs and kisses. So nice to see uh, some of familiar faces and names. Um, and also nice to see new, new colleagues uh, uh, with us here today. Our presentation is about diversity, equity and inclusion in Latin America in the context of an open education initiative. This open education initiative is GoGM. With a, a, we would assume that a, a, a most of uh, our colleagues here are familiar with. Uh, my name is Karina and I had the pleasure to work this, have been working, we haven't finished the project yet, but we've been working together, I've been working with Viv since in the beginning of this year in this project, so it has been a lot of fun. Thanks Viv for coping with me. <laughs> and, and, just, and just to say when we were saying before, before the, the presentation started, so it's, it's nice that we are all here, uh, 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 you know, happy, healthy, safe, um, um, but not all of us are sane and that I include myself and Viv uh, um, in that context. <laughs> right, okay. Um, our presentation today will cover a few aspects of the project, the rationale, uh, uh, and, and we will also talk about phase one of the project uh, that was last year in 2019. Uh, uh, and then, uh, of course, findings from uh, uh, this project, which is phase two. Uh, we will mention briefly about the process and methodology we used. Uh, we will present some preliminary findings, recommendations, and we will also briefly present what is already in place, what GoGN has been working on in terms of implementing a DEI, a diverse and equity and inclusion strategy. Um, about the project, it's a GoGN project and also supported by the Hewlett Foundation. Like I said, this is phase one happening in 2020, which is an incredible year. So phase one happened in 2019. And in phase one, we collected uh, our perspectives and insights uh, um, um, about di uh, diversity, equity, inclusion in open education from experts in Africa. So I had the pleasure to work with Judith Petty uh, and there together we, uh, 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 we, we then ran this project and collected some insights from experts there. Um, in terms of rationale for the project, which is very similar to the other one, it's for GoGN to be more diverse, equitable and inclusive. It's also to incorporate perspectives and experiences of underrepresented community, and really, most importantly, to develop a, a, a diversity, equity, and inclusion guidelines for GoGN. Because you know, despite of all efforts uh, uh, from colleagues leading the team uh, and all involved and all people involved, GoGN is still remains a, a, a largely white. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, from colleagues from uh, uh, North America or, or developed countries. Um, uh, it's similar than what Andy was saying before, you know, whose who's curriculum, so whose content and whose open education. So the idea is to make a GoGN a project that everybody can engage uh, 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 within, within some context, within some uh, parameters, but that you know we are we are more diverse we reach others uh, and, and we are also uh, more equi equitable in terms of process and methodology this in particular phase two which was in latin america we interviewed 12 stakeholders there from different countries in latin america uh, uh, we then transcribed those interviews and, and, and categorized and coded, uh, uh, and the analysis was uh, conducted through in vivo. We have now prelim uh, preliminary data analysis that we are going to share with you guys here today. It's the first time we are actually sharing that. Um, um, 
And as many projects probably around the world, our project has also been affected by COVID-19 because the idea was initially, our plan was to do what we did in phase one, conduct a two day, uh, uh, present uh, our uh, preliminary findings in a two day workshop with experts in OER and open education. Uh, we were hopeful at some stage uh, uh, even though there is a promise of a vaccine, and today we have more good news about a vaccine, another one. Um, but we are not sure uh, uh, if we will still be able to implement that aspect of the project, uh, 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 considering that cases in Latin America are still growing. So perhaps we will find an alternative way of doing and through Zoom or through a one day uh, uh, or maybe two half a day's conference uh, or workshop, we, we might be able to then present the preliminary findings and collect additional thoughts on those findings. Um, um, dissemination is through presentation like this one. We have a draft blog post, so hopefully soon that will come out and also a uh, uh, pu publication. So what is space? <clears throat> so we, we then decided that before we present phase two, some preliminaries of phase two, we should, you know, just very briefly, this is a snapshot, very briefly talk about some of the key elements of uh, uh, the diversity, equity and inclusion project in phase one, which happened in Africa. Um, there were many more, um, but some of the key things discussed amongst participants were the definition. They were really, in, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, um, pressing against that. They were really discussing and, and, and debating about definitions, which sometimes overlap. For them, in phase one, uh, diversity should consider but should not be limited to culture, race, ability, reproductive status, health, criminal records, class and appearance. Diversity should also acknowledge the range of context uh, uh, and depending diversity and the limitations of people's understanding of diversity. In terms of inclusion, participants then uh, uh, believe that we should take in consideration other people's views and opinions, and that uh, inclusion should also uh, 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 include, inclusion should include, and not uh, uh, or exclude within the context of GoGN and the reasons why. Um, inclusion sh should also involve the marginalized and unheard voices. In terms of equity, it is all about removing barriers to access language, including language and research practices, that it is about uh, equal opportunities and acknowledgement that there are different needs and that equity must be a continuing process that never should, should never stop. So now I'm going to present similar findings. Well, the findings about the definitions of these three elements, three concepts in phase two. And you will see that um, there are some similarities. Uh, some of the things are very, very similar, but then uh, um, others are addition to that. For, for participants in Latin America, diversity is about multidisciplinary. It's also about a variety of experience. So we should, we should include them. It's about a diverse, a, 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 a whole range of languages. And, and then goes back to, you know, it's one language for how many people. Um, and it's also about uh, representation. So you can see that there are some similarities and in and, and addition to that. For uh, Latin American participants, then inclusion is about participation, integration, collaboration, um, and it's also about uh, 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 colleagues feeling valued uh, for, for what they have achieved and for who they are. In terms of equity, in, in Latin American co colleagues said it's about social justice, equal opportunities came back again. 
is about uh, uh, capacity building and raise awareness of open education. So Vivian will explain that later, but not everybody is actually uh, fully aware in South America or Latin America what, what it is. Um, it is about uh, 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 equity in resources, resources not only materials, but infrastructure, because not everybody has the same access. So now I will pass on to Viv, who will then continue to present you some of the other findings and also some of the recommendations uh, that participants shared with us. So Viv, off to you. Thanks, Karina. Can you move on to the next slide? Okay. Um, so uh, this was a quote that was taken from one of the respondents, uh, which basically I think defines very well uh, the DEI uh, in Latin America. And so basically the respondent said a diverse, equitable, and inclusive community is one where the rights of each person are respected, opportunities for growth are equal for all, but also adaptable to the needs and capabilities of the individual. That is, the community understood that an essential part of society is aware that individuals have different characteristics and needs and opportunities for growth should be accessible to all. So I think this speaks um, to the underlying characteristics of Latin Americans. Um, they are a whole different people uh, from the global north. Uh, they have different, they have a different educational system. Um, and so their needs have to be con contemplated in order to foster a DI community. Thank you. Next one, please, Karina. Okay, so uh, the interviews, as Karina said, um, were conducted. Well, thank God uh, we have Zoom and, and other tools because that's when the pandemic broke out. And so, of course, uh, and I was interviewing candidates uh, from all over Latin America, from Mexico and here, South America, from many different countries. So uh, the preliminary findings revealed uh, that first and foremost, not all participants were aware of GoGen. I think out of the 12, only four were. Um, so that gives us a good feeling that we really have to disseminate more the GoGen network here in Latin America. Uh, another point that came up uh, was, um, was the language barrier. Uh, in Latin America, there are two languages that are predominantly spoken, which are Spanish and Portuguese. Uh, so the lack of language diversity can be a barrier to expand the open education movement in Latin America. And this is also uh, due to the fact that resources are predominantly in English. Uh, so a lot of people don't speak English and when they look for resources, they are, they are in English and that can be, uh, that, that is a challenge to be overcome. Uh, another thing that came up was a very interesting finding is that um, participants responded uh, that they would like to have funding, support, and structure um, to be able to foster a DI community of practice and or, or research. Um, and this is because uh, many of the initiatives in Latin America are for open education are extremely underfunded. Uh, so they need to seek this additional funding. Uh, another interesting finding was um, that Latin America needs more researchers in open education to expand the movement in the region and to give voice to the global south. Uh, now, I just want to say that there is a lot of research going on here in Latin America in terms of open education, um, but we definitely need to increase that number. And finally, um, the participants suggested strategies and recommendations 
to develop effective ways of communicating open research activities in Latin America. That will be very useful in the future. Um, uh, will be triangulated with the other results that we find uh, from this project. Five minutes left. Okay, uh, so wrapping this up, uh, key recommendations from Latin American participants are to develop further partnerships with Latin American universities to enhance GoGen visibility and reach. So this basically means um, having like ambassadors that go to the uh, Latin American universities and talk about what GoGen is. <laughs> Uh, establish a clear objective communication identity for the Latin American community, taking uh, into consideration all its particularities, um, the development of conferences, workshops, or seminars to build capacity in open education, and that includes the translation of a lot of the content into Spanish and Portuguese. And finally, to provide small research grants to disadvantaged students from the global south. Thank you, Max. Uh, so this is here, uh, this is what GoGen is already committed to, um, uh, and it does very well, uh, informing members uh, that diversity, equity, inclusion guidelines are an, an, op an operation. Um, GoGen does create an environment in which individual unique experiences and contributions are recognized and valued. Um, it does create an open research community that promotes dignity and respect for everyone, irrespective of race, sex, disability, religion, nationality, or gender. Uh, it makes available open research capacity building and development opportunities to dis disadvantage students from the global south, and it regularly reviews uh, all of its open practices and procedures so that fairness, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, can be upheld at all costs. So uh, that basically wraps up our, our presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, I'm going to open here my chat. Thank you very much, both Karina and, and uh, Vivian. Uh, congratulations on all of this work. Again, and, uh, this is, and there is some applause and there'll be some congratulatory remarks also in the chat window. I think Bea, you were asking, um, you were asking a specific question. So probably you would like to articulate this to the, to the panelists again, Bea? Um, yes, it is. It is true. Um, so, uh, Vivian, you said uh, GoGen is not well known in in Latin America, um, but is it not well known because because of the language? Because GoGen mainly operates in English, and uh, what can we do about it? Because I think that's the you know that's the most difficult thing. Um, I think the language is certainly one of the reasons why it's not well known. Um, of course, there are several people uh, from Latin America who do uh, participate in OE Global and end up learning about GoGN. Uh, but so what can we do? Uh, definitely, we need to disseminate more uh, the GoGN network here in Latin America. Um, and let people know that there is this fantastic uh, network available in which um, PhD researchers, early career researchers in open education can participate in. Um, as an example, uh, from Brazil, I'm the only one. Uh, then we have Virginia from Uruguay. So as you can see, we're not very representative in the GoGen network. Yeah. No, I also I also think, but if then Bea put a, a, a comment there, but if it continues to operate in English, so I agree, I agree, Bea, we probably could have a stream of resources in Spanish at least, because then people in Brazil would, would have some access to it. We don't speak in uh, Spanish there, but you know, it's more accessible to be in Spanish than in Portuguese. Oh, there is also uh, um, 
thanks, Christian, uh, resources in Portuguese, I know, but Gojiani doesn't. Um, so it is, it is to disseminate the network and try to help more people. What can we do? It is, I, according to our findings also, it is to increase, you know, and to translating other languages at least so we can, we can make this accessible to other, to other people. Yes, there are resources elsewhere, um, but um, yeah. Yeah, and I think another way to do this, uh, I don't think we necessarily translate the research methods handbook, although that would be nice if we could do that. Uh, but I think another way is just translate the GoGen site um, so that people can log on and, and see what's going on, those who do not speak English. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm interjecting here, but we are out of time now, so I do encourage you to participate in this conversation <laughs> with <you> Connect. <laughs> I, I know that it just started heating up, so 